Now, the rest of the story. Dr. Harris stood in the darkened doorway of the farmer's barn, silent and staring. As his eyes adjusted, the shadows parted like curtains, revealing the shapes and the dimensions behind them. And there was something curious here, something anomalous to an English village in the outskirts of London. Whatever was out of place, Harris decided, had little to do with the age of the ancient structure. For if one had stood in that very doorway nearly three centuries previous, that is to say when the barn was new, one might still have felt uneasy, as though the observer were suddenly far from the quaint Quaker settlement in Buckinghamshire, as though one were, well, nowhere near anything at all. And then Harris looked up, up to the beams supporting the barn roof, And as he kept looking, he realized that his head was tilting to one side, tilting more and more, as though his subconscious were struggling to envision the beams upside down. And all at once it struck him. The old barn amid the trees near the village of Jordan's was not exactly a barn at all, not exclusively at any rate. It was instead a ship, an old sailing ship, whose materials had been reconfigured and reassembled to make a barn. Well, there was no question at all for clearly the roof beams were in the shape of a ship's keel. And on one of those beams... Well, now, wait a minute. That's the rest of the story. The discovery by Dr. Harris, at least superficially, is not at all surprising because the best wood for construction was reserved in those days for the Royal Navy. English farmers, wishing to build their barns out of sturdy stuff, would often buy sailing vessels about to be scrapped. And that's precisely what a Buckinghamshire farmer named William Russell did to procure wood for his barn in Jordan's. He was obviously correct regarding the quality of the lumber, for there the barn had stood for almost 300 years before Dr. Harris first laid eyes on it. Now, Randall Harris was a scholar, and so for markings on the barn timbers, he sought to identify the original vessel from which the timbers had been scavenged. On a beam taken from the ship's stern, Harris found the letters H-A-R. Harwich, he said to himself, the name of the ship's home port. He reopened the port books, seeking a ship's name that would coincide with other letters emblazoned on the same timber. And what do you know, there it was. A cargo ship that had carried freight between England and France for many years before being declared in ruins and appraised and sold. And yet it was a side trip. A side trip taken three years before she was scrapped that makes the vessel worth remembering. You may doubt if you wish, and others have, the research of Dr. Rendell Harris completed in the second decade of this century. But before you dismiss it, consider this one last piece of evidence. A fractured crossbeam, a split crossbeam, still in the roof of that old barn. Today, still there, just like the one described in the ship's own log. A beam that split during a storm at sea in 1620. A telltale timber from a watertight time machine linking England's past with your future. The barn was built from the lumber of the Mayflower. And now you know the rest of the story. And now the rest of the rest of the story. Even as a child, I remember wondering what happened to the Mayflower. What could have happened to a ship that was so important to our country's history? How could we not have preserved a ship with such a historical significance? Here are just a few of the descendants of the pilgrims who sailed on the Mayflower to America. President John Quincy Adams, President Zachary Taylor, President and General Ulysses S. Grant, President James Garfield, President Franklin Roosevelt, President George Herbert Walker Bush, his son, President George W. Bush, astronaut Alan B. Shepard, Marilyn Monroe, Orson Welles, Clint Eastwood, Humphrey Bogart, Dick Van Dyke, Christopher Lloyd, Richard Gere, Christopher Reeve, my man Bing Crosby, Hugh Hefner, and Amelia Earhart. You know, it's estimated that around 35 million Americans alive today are descendants of those 102 passengers aboard the Mayflower. With a total U.S. population of around 332 million people, that means that more than 10% of the population of the United States are descendants of the Mayflower Pilgrims. Now that surprised me. You and I may be descendants of those Mayflower Pilgrims. The barn behind me is the one Mr. Harvey told us about in the broadcast. It's known as the Mayflower Barn, 
Located about an hour and a half northwest of London, the Mayflower Barn sits on a farm that dates back to the late Middle Ages. Originally, the barn was much smaller, but it was expanded in the 1600s, presumably by timbers from the Mayflower. In the spring of 1920, Dr. James Rendell Harris was determined to find out what happened to the Mayflower. Was the ship wrecked, burned, or broken up? After four months of research, Dr. Harris shared his findings. He located the original appraisal of the Mayflower dated May 26, 1624. This document showed that the ship's hull, mast, yards, utility boat, windlass, and capstan had an estimated worth of about 50 pounds. Dr. Harris found that the owner of the farm at the time of the barn's addition was constructed owned a quarter share in the Mayflower. Another farmer just a few miles down the road owned another quarter share in the ship. An independent expert examined the barn and concluded that the timbers were from a vessel about the Mayflower size, about 180 tons. A masonry expert examined the brickwork upon which the timbered walls rested and determined that they were from the mid-1600s. One of the timbers had an iron attachment which appeared to be part of a ship's keel, presumably to repair a crack in the timber as mentioned in the Mayflower's log. An inscription carved in one of the timbers linked it to the Mayflower. After newspapers reported Dr. Harris's findings in the last week of July 1920, visitors from Britain and all over the United States flocked to the Mayflower barn and paid a small entrance fee just to take a peek. Dr. Harris held numerous lectures inside the barn. He told the audience, the spirits of the departed Pilgrim Fathers may be looking over your shoulders. Unfortunately, some of those visitors chipped off bits of wood to take home as souvenirs, humans being humans. In the following year, 1921, part of one of the timbers was placed in a chest inside the Pacific Highway Association's Peace Portal, now called the Peace Arch, on the border between Canada and the United States, between the communities of Blaine, Washington, and Surrey, British Columbia. The Peace Arch, with its timber from the Mayflower Barn, was built to be a symbolic link of peace between Great Britain and the United States. During World War II, wood from one of the rafters of the Mayflower Barn was purportedly used to create a Mayflower Medal for British Prime Minister Winston Churchill to give President Franklin Roosevelt. Unfortunately, I was unable to find a photograph of such a medal or any documentation that it even exists. Following World War II, a proposal to disassemble the Mayflower Barn and to reconstruct it in the United States was vehemently rejected after, and this is a quote, widespread antagonism to the proposal. But not everyone was convinced that the wood really came from Mayflower. Shortly after interest in the barn skyrocketed, some historians tried to discredit Dr. Harris's claims. For over a hundred years, experts have tried and failed to conclusively prove or disprove Dr. Harris's claims. In the 1960s, when the Mayflower Barn was desperately in need of repairs, the Pilgrim Trust contributed a thousand pounds toward the project, but they declined to endorse the Mayflower Barn's authenticity. The inspector of the ancient monuments on behalf of the Historic Buildings Council for England also shied away from endorsing its authenticity. Now in the United Kingdom, buildings of importance which deserve a special protection are listed under three grades depending on their level of perceived interest and in historical significance. In 1982, the Mayflower Barn was listed as a grade two building primarily because of its 17th century origins. But the listing also noted that the building was, quote, noted for Quaker associations and held by some to incorporate timbers from the Mayflower in which the Pilgrim Fathers sailed to New England in 1620. Today, the Mayflower Barn is privately owned and unfortunately, it's not open to the public. For over a hundred years, people have been asking the question, I'm gonna ask you now, is it really possible that timber from the Mayflower survives to this day is part of the Mayflower Barn? I'm Brad Dyson. Thanks for watching.
And as Paul Harvey would say, good day.